So once you finish creating your account, you should be within the AWS Management Console. And this is the page you're always going to see when you log in. It's always gonna show the most recent services here. Um, and you'll notice in the top right corner that I have my account called Exam Pro. If you're wondering how do you change that name, what you do is to go to my accounts here. And once there, you'll have your account settings up here. And if you go to edit, uh, you can change that name here, okay? So, you know, sometimes when you create your account, you don't like the account name that you gave it. And so that's your opportunity to fix it. Um, but once we're in our, our account, what I want you to do is immediately log out because I want you to get familiar with the way you log into AWS because it is a bit um, different than other providers. And so I don't want you to uh, get hung up later on with your account. So I've logged out. I'm going to go ahead and log back in. So you can click the orange button or what I like to do is drop down my account and go to AWS Management Console. It's a lot more clear. And you'll notice we're going to have two options, root user and IAM user. So this is what I'm talking about for the confusion. So when you log into your root user account, you all are always using an email. And when you're logging as an IAM user, you're actually going to be entering the account ID or account alias. But what we'll do is go to the root user and this is the email you use to sign up with the account. So for me, uh, I uh, called this one Andrew plus sandbox at exampro.co. I'm going to go to next. Sometimes you get this character box. It's very annoying, but it happens time to time. And so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and type that in. Okay. And hopefully it likes it. And then I'm just going to enter in my password. All right. And I'll be back into my account. And so notice it takes me back to the AWS Management Console. So the root account is not something we want to be generally using, uh, except for um, very particular use cases. And we do cover that in the course. Uh, but what I want you to do is go set yourself up with a proper account. And so what we'll do is go to the top here and type in IAM. And this stands for Identity and Access Management. And we'll click on IAM here. And on the left-hand side, we're going to see a bunch of options here. Um, and so notice right away, we get to the IAM dashboard where it's going to start to make some recommendations for us. The first one is always to add MFA, multi-factor authentication. Uh, another thing you can do is set an account alias. So you can see that I've set one here prior. So if I just go ahead and remove it, the way we'd have to log in is via the account alias, uh, which is the same as the account ID. And so I don't really like that. So I'm gonna just rename it to deep space nine. And uh, these are unique, so you have to uh, pick something that is unique to you. So it could be your company name or things like that. It's gonna make it a lot easier to log in uh, when we create our additional user here. So we'll come back to MFA at some point here. But what I want you to do is go over to users and go ahead and make yourself a new user. And so I'm gonna call this one Andrew Brown. And I'm gonna enable programmatic access. I'm gonna enable uh, AWS Management Console. So this one's gonna allow me to use the APIs to programmatically work with AWS. And this one here is going to allow me to just log into the console, which is uh, pretty fair here. So now that I have this, we can auto-generate it or give it a custom password. I'm just gonna auto-generate it for the time being. And here it says, you must create a new password at the next sign-in, which sounds fair to me. And we can go ahead and create ourselves a new group. So it's pretty common to create a group called admin. And notice here, this is where we're gonna have a bunch of different policies. So the first one here, which is admin and access, provides full access to AWS services and resources. And this pretty much gives you almost, nearly almost the same capabilities as the um, AWS root user account. Uh, and so that's gonna be okay because we are an admin in our account. So I'll check box that on. But I just wanna show you here, if you drop down filter policies and you went to AWS manage job functions, these are a bunch of uh, pre-made uh, AWS uh, policies that you could apply uh, to different users. So what's really popular after the administrator access is to usually give the power user access. And so this one allows um, a user to do basically anything they want with the exception of management of users and groups. So, you know, it could be that that's something that you'd want to do for some of your users. I just don't want to have any trouble. So I'm going to give us um, admin access here. And we're going to go ahead and create this group. And so here is the group that we are creating. We're gonna go next. We can apply our tags if we want. I'm not gonna bother. We're gonna hit next review and then hit create user. All right, and so now what it's doing is it's showing us the access ID and the access uh, key secret that we can use to programmatically access AWS. And then there's a password here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show it. And what I'm going to do is just copy this into a clipboard anywhere.
And so I'm just copying that off screen here because I'm gonna need it to log in and I'm just gonna remember my username as well. All right, and so what we'll do is go ahead and hit close. So what I'll do is go back to my dashboard here. And remember, I set my account alias as DeepSpace9, but we could also use the account ID to log in. I'm just gonna grab my account ID off screen here. And what I wanna do now is go ahead and log out and now log into this I am user. And this is the one that you should always be using uh, within your AWS account. You shouldn't be using your root user account. So what I'll do is go over to I am user here and notice now that it says account ID, so 12 digits or the account alias. So here I can enter in uh, these numbers here or I can enter in my alias, which is deep space nine. And again, you'll have to come up with your own creative uh, one there for yourself. And we'll go ahead and hit next. And so notice what it's gonna do is now ask me what my I am username is. So I define mine as Andrew Brown. And then uh, we had an auto generated password there so that we had saw. And so I'm gonna place that in there. We'll go ahead and hit sign in. And so now right away, it's going to ask me to reset the password. So I'm gonna put the old password in there. And so now I need a new password. I strongly recommend that you generate out uh, your passwords to be very strong. I like to go to password generator and I'll drop this down and I'll do something really long, like 48 characters. And um, if you don't like uh, weird characters, you can take those out there. Sometimes it loads here, so you gotta try it twice. Um, and I'm gonna go down to, whoops, 48. There we go. And so that's pretty darn long. So I'm gonna copy that off screen here so I do not forget. And you probably would wanna put this in a password manager, something like Dashlane or some sort of thing like that. And we'll go ahead and we will paste that in and we'll see, whoops, I don't want uh, Google to save it. Uh, and we'll see if it takes it. And so there we go. So what I'll do is now log out and I'll make sure my new password works because you really don't wanna have problems later. So we'll type in deep space nine, Andrew Brown. Again, this is gonna be based on what, your, uh, what you have set. And we'll go ahead and log in and there I am. And so now notice that it doesn't say um, exam pro or whatever, it says Andrew Brown at deep space nine. So it's using the account alias and showing the name and that's how I'm gonna know whether I'm the root account user or whether I'm logged in as an IAM user, all right? So there we go.